Anyway, speaking of which, well, the next person actually makes a lot of noise, but in a good way. And of course, he's gained notoriety for being one of the most vociferous MPs in the country. But maybe he speaks to matters that pertain to you, and that's why he's joining us on the show. Let's dig into his mind a little deeper and find out what the future looks like for him. When we get back, we'll head into Parliament right here on the show. Don't go anywhere. Well, you're welcome back. And yes, our big conversation is happening right now with a very special guest. I mean, a lot of you know him within the political circles. Um, and like I said, he saw the unvarnished truth about his stance when it comes to the LGBTQ community. But beyond that, I mean, there's a lot to know about him, a lot to learn from him. He's a two-time MP in Ghana's seventh parliament in the Fourth Republic. And he's quite, uh, you know, vociferous when it comes to issues. And so today, he joins us on the show. Have you met some George before? No. You haven't met him before. Is anybody in Ningo Pram Pram? Is anybody from that constituency? None of you? So he's not your MP? Not. Well, we're moving you all to Ningo Pram Pram this afternoon. Are you ready for that? Yeah. Then make some noise for the man, Sam George! Yeah. Jata George. Yeah. Charlie today. Drum of our Nibo. Oh, you want drum with day inside. How's Ningo Pram Pram doing? I don't tell drum over here. I feel Afi. Afi, I am a now. Afi, Bene. No, me, I don't need any country, no. Eba, me, I have a. I'm a legend. I'm about in 2025 more. I don't think you understand the guy. Did you understand? Yeah. Oh, you understood everything? Because of Sam George. Well, you had John Mahama in there. So I, I told him that whatever is on his heart may it come to pass. And he says, then 2024, John Mahama is coming yeah. as president. Yeah. Yes, eh? Who are those who are saying no? Yes. 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 Hey, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but how are you feeling about the elections, though? I mean, it's getting um, pretty tense, is it not? Well, um, for me, I think that 2024 is an election for the NDC to lose, not for the NPP to win. Um, okay. Because if you're looking at basically what the NPP's track record is, they have absolutely no track record. Um, the NPP is planning to go in with violence like they've done. You, you're seeing Alan Tremanting have to resign because of violence and intimidation. they are planning to go in with violence? As if it's deliberate. Um, oh, yes, it's intentional. They are targeted Alan Tremanting's people. They've hounded him out. He's run away. And if, if the crocodile is eating his own eggs, what will he do to the chicken's eggs? Politics and life favors the brave and courageous, not the timid. So he should have stayed? I think he should have he should have toughed it out, um, but I think that bottom line is Alan Chamanting shot himself in the foot when he accepted to be part of Akufuado's government. Rather, yes, he shouldn't have accepted. Absolutely, I mean he 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 served in a government that has been abysmal. How can he extricate himself from it? I I, I mean you are being sabotaged. So what was he doing there? Loyalty. Well, so then we can't trust him to be loyal to Ghana. He's loyal to the MPP. I'm just assuming. I'm not Well, saying... if that assumption is the case why he stayed on, then he's not fit to be president. If you were in his shoes, would you resign? Oh, absolutely. So if we are paying you a salary with our taxes, Kayai mm. are paying taxes to pay you a salary. Mm. You know, construction workers are paying taxes indirectly to fuel your Land Cruiser. Mm. And you are being sabotaged. And you couldn't come out to speak about it. You As waited. Oh. President Mills was asked to him, but he didn't sit down to accept sabotage. You've forgotten that President Mills of blessed memory stormed the harbor yeah. and shook the customs officers. Because he was president. Ah, but that's, you said Asum I'm showing sure you uh, who Asum was. Trade Minister and President. Uh, but Trade Minister, was difference. He, he didn't get the title Asum so why was he acting like <laughs> Asum <Jehini? laughs> Oh, Sam. But, but Sam, if, if you say that, I mean, a section of Ghanaians have also said that if John Mahama should come, he has only four years. What really can he do? And why are we giving the mandate to, or why are people deciding to give the mandate to someone who has come, has been tried and tested, and it didn't work, which is why he was voted out? Okay. Three things you've said that I'll would, I would, I would discuss. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, there's a school of thought that says we should have one president, a president who serves seven years, one term, and goes. Mm. Because, you see, you have the president come in, he's thinking about his second term from day one. Yeah. So Akufuado's first term, from day one, as soon as he, whilst he was swearing the oath at Independence Square, he was thinking of his re-election in 2020. Oh, any be Like re-election is on the age, right? mm. You understand me? Mm. And so when a president has a re-election, 
that becomes his focus. His focus is not delivering in his first term. Mm. And so when you even look at most of our two-term presidents, they do a lot more projects completion in their second in the term. Second, yeah. People will tell you it's because the projects now had to start and all of that. But it's simply because a lot of the things in the first term are geared towards winning an election. Mm. Then a lot of things in the second term is about consolidating a legacy. Okay. Now, people benefit from the consolidation of the legacy. Now, when you have Ghana in the state where it is, where it is, I mean, in, in Chile, say, Atitia Pasca. Mm. Pansa in cry, like it's it's it, 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 if this was a mechanic who said the speedometer has finished. If it was Tego sisters, they'll sing Ankamati. Ankamati. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's 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 a colossal mess. We've never been this messed up before. You need a president who is focused on on fixing the mess, mm. you know, building the Ghana we want. Because it's not about him and a re-election. It's about building that Ghana that we all want. He comes in with, for four years. He knows that's all he's got. He has to make the tough decisions and take those decisions for us. Now, is this a president who couldn't do it before, mm. for which reason he left? No, that's disputable. Mm. There were a lot of things that formed the basis okay. of John Mahama's loss in 2016 that post the loss have come out for, for the benefit of people. Mm. For example, a lot of people voted against John Mahama simply because they believe that John Mahama paid for a confirmed to fly to Burkina Faso. Mm. Only for them to find out later, when you read Manasseh Azuri's book, that there was nothing like that. It was a joke he made. Mm. But that was a very expensive joke yeah. that cost the president votes, okay? And, and, and again, you want to have a man who has the benefit of hindsight. I'm not saying John Mahama was perfect in his first term. I'll okay. be the last to say that. Okay. He's human, but he's learned from his mistakes. The mistakes that were made, the places that need tweaking. Mm. He's got the benefits to come back. It's like making President Kufo president again today. There are things he would do better because he's had the benefit to sit back and look at the decisions he took. Mm. How did they pan out? What was the effect of it? When he comes in, he's not going to make those same mistakes. Okay. So, and, and where you are now, where Ghana has been sent 20 years back, Today, Ghana's mm. economy is like, is, like, is like the year 2000, mm. before Kufo went to pick. Mm. That's where we are, mm. okay? Because for us to even get an IMF program, we have to go and beg some people to beg some people to beg some other people to go and beg the IMF before they give us a loan. That's how bad we are. We're not credit worthy to even take a loan on our own strength. We have to beg the Germans, beg the Americans, to go and beg the Chinese. To I mean, all kinds of beggings, you know, mm. beggar squared, you know? <laughs> 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 so so you, you, need, you need a man who has seen it before who has seen the pitfalls, yeah. who from day one can hit the ground running, is not now coming to experiment. Okay. You understand? Because he knows how the machinery of governance works. He knows he has only four years to deliver and cement a legacy. But he to needs build money. the Ghana we, want, we, we need. He Sorry? needs money in the system to be able to fix some of these problems. Oh, yes. He not? Do we have the money? <laughs> the money, dear, if I tell you we have the money, I'll be lying to so you. So how will he do it? Oh, you see... That's the benefit of having a solid team around him. For example, the president had spoken, uh, and I'm calling him president, Father, let, let it come you to pass. You mean President Ekufado? No, John Dramani Mahama. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> 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 speaking, speaking at Academic City, he, he spoke about building a, a, an ICT driven economy, yeah. where he was looking at private sector investment to. to bringing three billion dollars mm. in ict infrastructure now you see you have a government that is you have two kinds of governments when you look at the muhammad experience and the kufa Baumia experience one is one that does less talk more action or more action less talk malt m-a-l-t more that, action less talk isn't that alan chemati oh he he stole it he from said, talk less talk more act less or something like that when he launched GTP. he cried he's confused his guy is yeah. confused <laughs> <laughs> But, <laughs> you know, John Mahama spoke about this, this, this plan to have $3 billion of investment in ICT. Mm -hmm. And anybody who understands the ICT knows, uh, sp space knows that for every dollar you invest, properly invested and managed, you, yeah. you reap $10. Yeah. And to let you see that he has a holistic plan. Two weeks later, he gave another speech and spoke about the 24-hour economy. Mm. Now, people don't see the linkages, but if you had ICT infrastructure, that allowed Ghana to become the BPO and KPO um, um, hub for Africa, BPO business process outsourcing, yeah. KPO knowledge process outsourcing, where we're running call centers, we're doing digital processing for multinationals outside mm. of the country, like mm. what is happening in Mauritius, like what Morocco is trying to do, like what 
India has, has mm. done to boost their economies. When you have those come in here on the back of private investment, the three billion he was speaking about, and then you, you can then begin to build your 24 hour economy. Okay. Because giving Ghana's GMT time zone. Yeah, giving us a lot of, yeah. Giving Ghana's GMT time mm. zone, you can then have 24 hour cycles. Okay. Because at the time China is going to bet, New York is waking up. Yeah. And if you're offering services as a BPO to a business in New York, and also offering one to a business in Beijing. What it then means is 24 hours around the clock, you can run three shifts. Mm -hmm. So if you had a 100 capacity KP or BPO center, you could employ 300 people. Okay. Because one will work from 12 midnight to 8 a.m. Another will work from 8 a.m., you know, so uh, for, for, yeah. for, till about, about uh, what, 8, 8 to about 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then the other will work mm -hmm. from 4 p.m. To, to 12. You have three shifts. And that's how you deal with unemployment. It's not okay. rocket science, but you need to be smart. Mm. And being smart is not about looking smart and talking smart. We've seen someone who talked smart and gave us all the lectures, Central University, Distinguished lect uh, Speakers Series. You remember? 72 now, questions. Uh, 170. 170, uh-huh. I've If the fundamentals are weak, <laughs> the exchange rate <laughs> will expose you. I've been a logo ke pasasa. <laughs> and he was laughing at himself that, oh, yes, I said it, but I mean, you know, so it's not about talk. And I said, you've seen two experiences, the German Ahama experience, which is about action, getting the job done mm. without a lot of trills and, and flair and all of that. John got things done. People can understand how in four years, John Mahama was able to get the Greater Accra Regional Hospital built. If Yang Kwanta Regional Hospital was done, you had the Regional Maritime uh, 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 Hospital okay. also built. Across the country, we saw the infrastructure. We, the Bank of Ghana under John Mahama mm. built the Bank of Ghana Hospital, which became the saving grace for Akufuado's ministers when they contracted HIV, uh, COVID. The, sorry. Mm. When they contracted mm. COVID. Mm. <laughs> Okay. HIV day, COVID na maker, you know. Okay. But when they contracted COVID, it was the Bank of Ghana Hospital mm. built under John Dramani Mahama and Abdul Nashiru Ishahaku as governor of the bank that saved the lives of Nanado's ministers. Now Nanado is president. Mm. What is the Bank of Ghana doing? They've declared a loss of 60 billion, 55 billion negative equity. They are building a 250 million dollar headquarters. Mino mm. Okay. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I'm just showing you the difference between the two. You had John Mahama build you the Tema interchange, build you, build you the uh, Kwame Nkrumah interchange, Obechebi Lamte interchange, started the, the Pokwasi interchange, mm. built the, the Kumasi International Airport, Tamale International Airport Phase 1. Phase 2 was already in the pipes mm. that these guys came to take over. Today, what are we seeing? English What have they done with the money? Yes, a combat do because Osuno Tisikano so Osuno I mean, they have messed up the economy in such a way that look, you need someone who understands the way our economy works. You see, our economy is not a textbook economy. Okay. When you have people like Baumia who don't understand, and all they know is true and poor. Is that, is that what? It is? Oh, Baumia is a true and poor economist. He's a true and poor economist. Absolutely. Wale well, well, Adam Smith. Hey. He's a true and poor economist. All he does is he goes to read the theory, comes to stand there and wax lyrical and repeats it. Okay, now we've given you the job. Mm -hmm. Go and do it. He says give him the mandate and he will do it as president. Ah, you were head of the economic management team. And the economy has moved in, you said they say it's moving forward. And I say it's because- It's turned the corner. Me, me, it's turned the corner. You see, when you are going around in circles, if you're okay, you are turning corners, but you are going around and comes back to the same place. You turn another corner back to the same place. That's what is happening. And I said it. Me, my first degree is in engineering. Uh -huh. In engineering, we know that you can have motion in either way. Yeah. So for them, they are moving forward, but they are moving forward in reverse gear. How, how is that possible? <laughs> no. When you put that thing in, in, the car is moving forward. Yeah, but in reverse gear. Yeah, so it becomes a negative. Do you understand me? Mm. You see, in engineering, the scale is not zero. Uh -huh. to 100. Uh -huh. The scale goes from 0 to 100 and 0 to negative. Both are movements. Okay. You understand me? So you had movement from 0 heading towards 100, 100 positive, uh -huh. under John Mahama. Then these guys came, took the bus. And then it, when John Mahama had gotten to gear 4, they said, oh, no, this gear doesn't look fine. Let's put it in the R. You know, the R, the R looks nicer than the 1, 2, 3, 4. You know, when you take the gear stick, uh, all the, the other R gears are numbers. Exactly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Mm -hmm. 
I looks different. Oh, then this is the nice one because he did chew and pour. So he put it in R and then stepped on the tin. And then the car is moving. Why are you in the car? Had, had we are in the see. car. You, if, if, you want to see, if you want to see the car, go to Kotoka this evening. And go and look at the number Everybody's of people at the leaving. airport. Does it not worry you? Ah, why wouldn't they leave? Bella, you self sitting here. If you get a chance, you will jack How do you know that? Oh. Uh, I haven't told you that I want to leave. I want to serve my country. Yes. If you get how, a chance, would you leave? How much was I can't leave. Where am I going? LGBT before mama cry. They have blocked you. <laughs> <laughs> See, they blocked you let from, me ask you from a question. their countries? You know, and this is just, I mean, mm. take your salary. Mm. Don't go to when your mama left, though. Mm -hmm. You see, I don't even want to make it hard for you. Because if I say you should take it to when your mama left, we'll end the show now because you start crying. Ah. Yes, you get emotional <laughs> and start crying. So I don't want, I want the show to, to reach its end. <laughs> so don't go to 2016. Mm -hmm. Go back to 2021, mm -hmm. 7th January. Mm -hmm. When Akufado swore his second term. Now, your salary converted to dollars. How much it was in dollars? In your head, don't mention it. Uh, just convert it to dollars. And all of you sitting here do that work, convert your salary now into dollars. When Akufado won his second term, at that time, the exchange rate was 6 to a CD. Mm -hmm. Many is 12, although 11.8. 11 mm, 11 no uh -huh. Now, convert your salary now. In two years, eight months, see what Akufado has done to your salary. Someone flipping beggars at McDonald's mm. earns more than you who works in a bank. Mm. Bank, oh, tie pumping this heat <laughs> with one tie and suit, and you are sweating. Sweat. Akufado heat. You see, Akufado has done crap. The angels that are supposed to blow air are refusing to blow air in Accra. Hey, Sam George. Oh, we will blame Akufado for everything. I mean, is we are using is his marking scheme. They blame your Mahama when people had dysentery or had a, a constipation, they blame wow. your Mahama. We are using their marking scheme, oh. I'm a marking scheme, not what you say. So you're flipping the coin. Oh. More like. Oh, but, we're but, just giving them a measure of but their But you own talk medicine. about the fact that if you had a chance, you won't leave this country because, or maybe you would have wanted to leave, but because you've been well, blocked, more like. Oh, no, I've not. They, 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 I wouldn't say I've been blocked. They can't block me. Mm. Ah, can you catch the wind? Have they put you on any red alert? Yes. I heard you say that something about money laundering. Yeah, uh, they claim I'm doing money laundering. Are the, you doing the, money laundering? Show me where the money is. Let me launder it. Like. You don't have the money? <laughs> I don't even have a washing machine to talk of laundry. No, I have one for clothes. I don't have one for money. <laughs> but, but this whole LGBTQ, yeah. um, anti-LGBTQ mm -hmm. campaign that you're pushing, yeah. I mean, I saw you respond to the, um, the ambassador to the US, from the US to Ghana, yeah, about yeah, yeah. that statement that she Virginia made. Virginia Palmer. But there have been a lot of people who have said that maybe you're being a, a bit too hard on the issue and you should soften a bit. Do you agree to that? Why should I soften a bit? Bella, if I came to your house, mm. And I said to you that homo me. Mm -hmm. I want to come and eat, and you have food. Mm -hmm. And then I come to your house, and then I tell you that me, the food, I like to pass it through my ears and my nose, so mm. not through my mouth. Mm -hmm. So your house, your food, mm -hmm. I'm the guest. Mm -hmm. But you can't, I won't be comfortable with you eating through your mouth. Because mm -hmm. if you eat through your mouth, you make me uncomfortable. Because I like to eat the food through my ears. So don't eat the food through your mouth. Will you accept it? Is that what is happening? Ah, we have our culture, we have our own norms, our customs. Our customs are not pro-LGBTQ. Mm. You are coming to our country to come and do business or come and do whatever here. Then you say that I should leave the God-given highway mm. and go enter the gutter. Does That's it what sense? it is. But have you seen quite a number of young people who are I wouldn't say involved in LGBTQ because I'm not in the room with them when they do it. But we've seen a number of them who are effeminate. And they, you know, showcase some of these female tendencies, especially even for the boys, and some for the girls as well. They showcase male tendencies. And they're saying that it doesn't necessarily mean that I am part of the community. But now, if this bill is passed, it sort of puts me in that spotlight where everybody assumes that once I'm effeminate, then I am. And that goes against me. Well, you see, I keep saying that people need to read. People who shouldn't behave like Baumia. They must read oh, and understand. How is he catching stray bullets? Because he doesn't read to understand. He just reads to pour. Read to understand. Oh. If you read the bill, the bill actually criminalizes victimization mm. of alleged members of that community. Okay. Again, the bill doesn't say that because I look at you and you behave effeminate and you are a man, bam, you are jailed. But no. you know that there are people who also are, are stigmatized against such people. <laughs> And that's what I'm saying, the bill takes care of that. Okay. You can go to jail for three years. Hmm. 
for verbally assaulting somebody without mm. proof. Mm. We can go to jail for three years. The bill says that. Mm. Okay, so how, how, how is that a problem? Your freedoms can be curtailed on three grounds. Mm. On the grounds of public health, public safety, and public morality. Public morality. Do you want us to start teaching our children that you see two women and you can call one daddy and one mommy? We've already seen it on our TV sets. Absolutely, and that is why when this bill passes, all TV stations would now be careful what they show. So on the same basis, when this law passes, hopefully before Christmas this year. Oh, before Christmas? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. You know, when it is passed, it then means that your editorial policy will need to take into cognizance the content of movies or, 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 or videos that you air mm. to ensure that it does not infringe on the law. It is not against your editorial policy to... We are not deten de determining for you mm. what to show. Yeah. So that's not press, gagging the press. Okay. But what we are saying is we're giving you the parameters within, because even today, mm -hmm. you are not allowed to just show anything. any and everything. But that's for the channels that operate here. What about the streaming platforms? Because whether we like it or not, the likes of, let's say, Netflix. Yes. Now, literally every movie you watch, there's an element yes. of LGBTQ yes. in there. Yes. How are we going to control something like that? Well, those, those are things that we'll continue to explore, because there are countries, for example, that have blocked some of these streaming platforms. Yeah. And I've said to them, before you operate here, you need to clean up what is, what is available in our, our region. Mm. You understand me? And look, it's, it's a wave that's coming. Uh, in, October, in, in October, no, April this year, okay. 26 speakers of, of parliament across Africa's continent mm -hmm. met in Uganda. Mm -hmm. you know, and they committed to one thing. They're waiting for Ghana to pass this bill. They're going to replicate Ghana's bill across the African continent. And oh, once that happens... You then begin to see Africa speak with one voice okay. and begin to say to the streaming platforms, you need to consider what is coming into our space. Then we should respect every culture. Oh, we should respect. Imagine everybody. the Ghanaian amb high com ambassador to U.S. Sa Sam, what formation have you been doing lately? One zero one one zero zero. Today, today like this, before God and man, I did half and I've done zero so far. Which one is half and zero? In no cocoa. <laughs> cocoa without bread. Yeah. So that's not one. They share one. Oh, but then uh, people but how, are doing half. How, how do you compare people are buying cocoa? How do you how do you without fish? No, but how do you compare? Kenke is heavy. Okay, you so that's compare, the one. You can't compare Komi to Coco. Alo Gobe to Coco. Their company is not coming in. Their company is not coming in. Chale is crazy. <laughs> but, but when you are not doing politics, what do you do? Because it looks like hmm. you eat politics, you drink politics, you sleep politics, literally your entire life. I'm lying by my wife. Happy anniversary, by the way. You recently yeah. celebrated your, your wedding 11th, anniversary. 11th Eleven anniversary. years. Yeah. How's it been? It's been, it's been, it's been, it's been a good journey. Mm. Um, marriage is work. It is. But it's a good, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good exercise, a good enterprise. Devotion Especially when you find the right person, when you're with the right person. Mm. Yeah, I mean, mar marriage is not a noun, it's a verb. It's a verb, it's a doing word. But the divorce rates are high. What are we not doing right? It's because people have short fuses. People, people, people have watched too many telenovelas. That's why marriages yeah, are ending yeah, so quickly. Yeah. Movies, movies have taught us a certain culture of impatience. Mm. No two people can live together without issues. Mm. But you see, the movies that we've imported, and you see, that's one thing that the LGBTQ people are doing with the movies. I'll just take you back a bit. In 2001, when I went to the university in Kumasi, it was, if anybody heard that somebody was doing money sacrifice, human sacrifice for money, Charlie, like, yeah, it, was it was a scary thing. Mm -hmm. So we've been accustomed to it by the power of movies. Mm. You understand mm. me? And so that's, that's really the, the challenge of marriages as well in young couples. I mean, in most movies, the guy does something, she doesn't like it, she calls her lawyer, she sues him, then she moves on, yeah. and then she meets another guy, and then she's better, or the guy moves on. I mean, that's not real life, man. But Look, don't movies what reflect our parents, real life what, situations? No, movies are scripts. They say, cut, take again, <laughs> cut, take again. Life, there's no cut, mm -hmm. and retake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you're, when, you're angry, <laughs> when you're angry at your wife, what do you do? So that's the point. You see, I can be angry at my wife, and I mean, me, when I'm angry, I'm angry. And mm. I free my mind and all of that. Now stop that. Because I've realized that even when she was wrong, because mm. I freed my mind, after we settled the matter, mm -hmm. then they now say, eh, but you said this. Yeah. So me, who was offended, now I have to now start saying, I have to start yeah, going, I beg. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. So now I've decided I won't talk. But you see, what you must learn is that 
even the tongue and the teeth fight in the same mouth. Yeah. So you and your spouse will have issues. The only basis that me, I would ever support walking away from a marriage is physical and emotional abuse. Okay. That and you'd leave. That, that's a no-no. But even that there are families that would say, oh, no, it doesn't matter, uh, work uh, it out. You, you, you have obituary in your house uh, very soon. Mm. The dog doesn't go Sh back to the Should we control how social media is used in this country? I think that it's something that the government is looking at and it's okay. something I support. Okay. Um, we, we need to have some kind of legislation that not, not, not censures, but regulates the use of social media. Mm. Because you see, there are many young people Bella, mm -hmm. who have had to go and borrow money because they don't even have, yeah. borrow money and end up sending that money to some criminal somewhere who claims he's some George and is offering them a job mm -hmm. because the person has created a fake account. And we're not doing enough to clamp down on those kinds of fake accounts. Yeah. The, the, the dissemination of false news and mm -hmm. misinformation and, and, and disinformation, we're not focusing on those things well enough as a country. So it's important that we look at those things and clamp down. I keep telling people, and let me use this platform, if anybody reaches you on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter, and comes into your DM and asks you, how are you doing? Mm. How's your day been? Do you know me? I have a job for you. Look, look at me, Sam George. You think I'm going to leave everything I'm doing? I'll leave LGBTQ, leave church, leave my wife, leave my constituency, leave my children, and come and be asking you, how are you in your inbox? <laughs> and offering you a job. I won't. It won't happen. I won't. And even if I had a job somewhere, I have constituents. Mm. They're the people I would take those, those jobs to. So why would I come to you? I don't know you from anywhere on Facebook and then come and tell you I'm giving you a job and tell you that there's some protocol officer somewhere. Yeah. Go and give him 1,500 and you two go and borrow money. I will bet you are, bro. Because it is not me. No MP is going to reach out to you. It's not just some judge. No MP will reach out to you on Facebook offering you a job or offering you travel experience. I know people are desperate because of how bad Akufado has kept the economy and how bad Baumia has kept the country. We always circle back to Akufado and see, Baumia. Oh, I told you. Do you sometimes feel like you would have been better off without politics at all? You know, before politics, I wanted to go into the army, so I don't know which would have been better. Army! Hey! <laughs> Thank my mother. My hey. mother literally knelt down and begged me not to. Why did but she I say picked the forms. Why did she say, would you have made it to height? Ah, but I'm taller than many people. I stand with some of the generals. I'm as tall as them or taller than some of them. There are people who have gone and they told them they were too short. I'm saying that I'm taller than some of the people who are generals in our army today. So, so what do you I'm mean? not sure too. Huh? I'm, I'm not saying <laughs> I'm not saying that, but sometimes we hear ridiculous excuses. Oh, yeah, but I mean, I mean my mates, I picked forms with. One of them is a lieutenant colonel now, oh. and about three of them are majors. So I will most likely have either been a lieutenant colonel or a major by now. Oh, in that's the army. nice. Yeah. Do you regret yeah. not going into the army? No, I'm thankful to God I didn't go into the army because uh, the reasons I was going to the army, <laughs> I'm not reasons? so proud of them now. What no, were the okay. reasons? It's okay. What were the reasons? It's okay. Hey, then they were very serious. Yes, that's why my mother prayed against it and knelt down and go all the pastors she knows to talk to me. So I like the politics like that. And, and you're doing, you know, pastoral duties as well. You're oh, a yeah. deacon. No, no, church. I'm an elder. Hey, elder, me sorry. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, church has always been a part of my life. Growing up in, in, in the house, I grew up in a house where I went to church every day. And I'm not lying. Every, every day. day? Yes. My mother was a women's leader. Uh -huh. So Monday there was women's fellowship. Uh -huh. I would follow her to go and sit in the women's fellowship. Tuesday was men's fellowship. I'll go with my father. Wednesday was teaching service. I'll go with him. Thursday, my father was also a cell leader. Ah. So when they go for the cell leaders teaching before the go cell him. meeting, I'll go with him. Friday, we had all night or deliverance service. Then Saturday was evangelism. Then Sunday was church service. And then in the evening was home cell meeting. Yeah. So your whole life was about church. I, I was a ch I'm a church boy. Me, I grew up in the church. In church, yeah. you don't feel again. Ah, the, Elder. Kingdom of, the kingdom of God suffered violence. <laughs> Thank you all. Don't, don't your church members sometimes say that we are not free if you... Oh, but in church, I'm, I'm free and friendly with everybody. Oh, yes, but then when they see you out of the... You oh, know. <laughs> some of them come and comment on my phone and say, oh, no, God bless you. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> they like it. Uh, but don't you see my... You yes. know who my, my senior pastor is? I do. Arjuna Sari. I do. If you, bring, if you come and cross him wrongly, you show you the power of God. I, I hear you like to dance a lot. Me? Yes. This is your wooden floor. It's not good enough. It's not strong enough. Why do you jump forward? I, I do a combination of the fire dance and the kumbu dance. And... <laughs> we, we, we have a game to play. Not a game necessarily, but we're going to do something very interesting. We'll take him out of his Don't comfort zone. Don't put me zone. on the spot, though. Oh, we won't. Don't worry. Honorable yeah. Sam George, we'll be right back to continue. Okay.